Hey there everyone and welcome to another Time Attack video. I'm bringing this out as the event's going on, but there's probably only about 24 hours before this event closes. I love Time Attack Wormhole Battles because they are like PvE at its absolute finest, as I say in every single one of them. Um, so we're going to go through the five battles. Here's the first one. The first one's always really quite easy. There's only nine monsters. The number of monsters increases as you go through these battles. And you can see I'm using my standard team that I use for Time Attack. Um, the enemy team is like fully stunnable, so I just stun waved them. I killed them all at the same time because then the Payback Revenge all gets absorbed by uh, Zulong. And then you can see with this next bit, I can just kind of hit and kill them off. In fact, enough time hasn't passed for X across his entrance, uh, only for this second one. But yeah, you can see that it's fairly easy to just kill through. I'm sure lots of strategies work for this. Um, and uh, yeah, I did it in like 45 seconds. Not a problem at all. Later on, it gets much tougher. So the second battle is a um, good fun one. Something you definitely have to build around uh, to beat. It is basically full camouflage. So I've gone here with three Stealth Bay monsters. And I put Cynthia because um, she's just a fast sweeper that's going to kill off some of these monsters. Um, I also got rid of Blue Maluga there right at the beginning because I knew that if I kill Blue Maluga, then the enemy team will be open to stun. So I've got Celestria next in line as a shocking entrance. Um, yeah, really unfortunately that Voidress didn't die to Stealth Break. I was surprised by that. I haven't really used Aquamurai. Um, so, didn't know about that. Anyway, um, able to kill through these monsters, and it's just a case of, you know, kill one at a time. You can't do much more when it's, uh, when it's camouflage. So, um, but yeah, there aren't, there aren't too many to kill through. So here, I use Stealth Bane on the, uh, Onigeist, making use of that excessive force, getting rid of the whole ground monster. Um, and then I do Stealth Break on the Bobble Basher, because Cynthia, with the type advantage against Tega Senshi, um, that should kill it with a quick draw, uh, as it does. So now, unfortunately, there's Willow Worm, a stun absorber on the field, um, when my shocky entrance comes in. <laughs> it didn't line up super well. But then what I just what I realise is I can actually die to the recoil from killing Willow Worm and then bringing my next shocking entrance, which is going to stop them from getting turns too quickly. So I do that and then kill off that Metoid. And then now I can try again to stealth break the Voidress. Hopefully it will get it this time. And it does. I also decide that because Arachna Diva has more health, so I was like, if it doesn't kill Voidress, then it's probably not going to kill Arachna Diva. Um, and then here at the end, I'm just kind of frantically trying to uh, trying to kill off these last monsters because my time is running out. Um, this was first attempt once I built this team, so I didn't know exactly how it was gonna how I was gonna close it out. Um, but yeah, you can see I'm just about gonna do it. Got 12 seconds left. Akrumarai goes to sleep, but luckily um, Celestrian can finish off this Arachna Diva just about. So that's the second battle, su ah, second battle, just basically use Stealth Bane. Now this third one, apologies for all the stuff on the screen, I got called and messaged while I was doing this recording. Um, I was kind of hoping I didn't actually win this win this attempt, but uh, I did. Um, so Mr. Bun was there, does the bunny bomb, so I decided to build with a stun revenge and then bring in this Tenebreeze so then I could do the sneak attack immediately. Um, you can build around it any way you want. I think it is kind of smart to do that, to have the revenge there, make the most of that bunny bomb at the beginning. And the enemy team's Ozard counters that shield very nicely, and you can see then I time strike the plumes disc. So I was able to deal with those first monsters very effectively uh, with the particular setup I went for. From this point, it gets a little bit trickier. Um, I put Akrimurai in there, hoping to stealth break Padronorka before it got to turn, but unfortunately it was a little bit slower. However, thankfully, I got really lucky, and the Padronorka didn't use Raw Slayer Bane on Delegazar, because I really want to use Delegazar for the end. So instead it did it on Zulong, which then means everything lines up perfectly here for the Counter-Strike, killing Akrimurai. Then Flocalosaurus wants to do the finishing snap on Tenebri. Tenebri is still stealthed, so that can just kill something. And then I lined it up, so Bobby Boom's there for the shocking entrance to kill those monsters uh, really quickly. And then you can see Delegazar here at the end very effective for taking out these last monsters. Pretty hard battle to build around. I'm not entirely sure how best to do it. Um, but yeah, this is the strategy I went for and it worked out quite nicely. Battle number four. This one I think is actually easier. It's it's just asking for abuse. There's one stun absorber in the front line and then three really slow monsters. So I went for Perpy because I was like, you know what, this is just asking to be beaten by Perpy. So um, yeah, I just needed like one stunning thing that was faster than Kuramasa, and then that was it. I could I could win from here. Uh, it's it's quite an easy battle, I think. Um, the the team itself is obviously throw at the beginning, 
and um, you want to deal with those crew masses, you can't let them get turns because then they're just going to obliterate your team. So you need some kind of control on them. Um, and then later on, the enemy team is pretty much just a PvP team. Um, it's just kind of random good stuff PvP. So um, a lot of stunning type stuff. Anyway, as you can see, I set up the perpies, and then I'm just kind of killing through the enemy team. That Voidress, I can't kill right now, but I'll be able to kill at the end. It's the only camouflage monster, so... Um, I, well, I guess I kind of lucked out like that, because this was, this was my second attempt on the battle. I didn't actually know what was um, what was further back in the team. But anyway, quite a few Rockoids to get through, uh, but I'm going to get through all of them and finish off the Voidress. Uh, like I said, I think it's pretty easy to do, uh, pretty easy to build around and beat. Uh, easier than that third battle. That third battle's a bit awkward. Uh, especially at the beginning where there's like stun absorbers, there's shields to get around, there's a bit of camouflage stun in there, like there's a lot going on. Now this fifth battle is really, really tricky, and I'm glad that there's one hard one. Um, now this uh, first attempt I actually failed in, um, but I got very close, so I wanted to show this one as well, and it gives me a bit more time to talk about the enemy team. The enemy team has 16 monsters, it has 4 Lyra and 4 um, Pupipa. So as you kill each Pupipa, then it makes a moth next in line, and as you kill each Lyra, it creates three Puffoxins at the back of their team. So this ma this battle, if you just straight up kill the enemy mo monsters, there's actually 32 monsters to get through, which is basically impossible in two minutes. So the best way to do this, I believe, is to do indirect killing, Crinotitan being the best one of this, because if you use the bomb curse, when the bomb goes off and it kills the teammates, their revenges don't trigger. It only triggers the revenge of the one which you actually cursed. So I believe that's probably the best way to do it, or using stuff like that. You know, Mega Bomb does the same kind of thing. It uh, doesn't trigger the revenges. And then, yeah, it gets really complicated because these Lyra, they get a turn in like five seconds, and then when they get that turn, they then kill one of your monsters with Mermaid's Hex and turn it into a useless monster. So there's a lot of awkward stuff to deal with in this. Um, and yeah, there's lining up as well. Uh, because of the 80 seconds that it passes when it enters, if you kill it and lots of other monsters, sorry, if you kill lots of monsters and the Lyra enters and the monsters behind enter, they can get turns before it's possible for yours to get a turn. So this Atlan Tyrant is a problem because it's two monsters behind Freeze Cobra, it's three monsters behind a Lyra, so if you if you line it up wrongly, uh, then the Freeze Cobra gets a turn, it does Poison Gas, then the Atlan Tyrant gets a turn, does Double Poison Eater, and you can't stop that uh, in any way. So... It takes a lot of building around to try and get everything to line up. And at the back here, you can see there, there are a bunch of Puff Ox in. I've got Slash All and that kind of stuff to deal with these. Um, and uh, Malwing's in there too because the stun is nice and the Ultra Thunder is powerful enough that it can put the Puff Ox into whole ground. But as you can see, I couldn't quite skip and do Slash All at the end there. Very close to winning. Um, but yeah, so let's talk about my actual strategy that I built here. You'll notice my gear tyrant and then the two stun bombs, There's like I timed it so there's just a couple of seconds between them. That's so that you can get a turn before Lyra. I don't do the stun flash with gear tyrant because I'm trying to line up the, uh, the bomb curse perfectly. So I just skip with gear tyrant, do the two stun bombs, I'm doing the ab absolute minimum to pass the time that I need to pass, and then I'm using Savannah to just kill off teammates. Uh, you can use... Um, death Warg for that as well. So as I do this bomb curse, notice that Lyra was on 342 seconds. She's going to be on, uh, unfortunately the, the game freezed a bit here, so not the game, the recorder freezed. Um, but basically Lyra and what I skipped to is just over, uh, sorry, just under 300 seconds on that second bomb curse. So the second bomb curse goes off afterwards, rather than both bomb curse going off at the same time. Um, so one goes off, then a Lyra enters, passes that extra bit of time, then the second one goes off, and that clears through loads of monsters. And then you can see I've timed it, so only Freeze Cobra gets a turn there, uh, well lined it up. And so then I can do another Nova Blast. Now I was expecting Asmodia to do Bow Out on Mechaviathan, because that's what happened last time, except it didn't, so that was actually better. Um, but that's why I have the stunning entrance next in line, to just push them back, and then allow me to, to get my monsters turns with, for their Bloodthirst. Um, but yeah, as it turned out, I kept Mega Viathan, which is excellent, because uh, that's got the 400 second Mega Bomb charged. So I just, I'm just using my monsters now, because I know I can do this, I just need to keep using things. So I'm, even though they're all like stunned way out of play, um, I did the Mega Bomb there. And then from here, just kind of getting off those things. So um, I get rid of that one Puffox in, because that's all I can do there. It's uh, probably the best thing. And then just need to spam hit all because there's going to be one more Puffox in, which I can kill off. And it went a bit overkill at the end, you know, I had too many monsters, uh, probably because that Mechaviathan got rid of four, uh, four for me. 
but yeah. Really tough battle, that's the best way that I thought of how to do it. Um, I think Bomb Curse is probably the way to do it. Mega Bomb, if you can light that up, that's good. Uh, the thing is that um, those Pupipur has shields on them, and there's some other monsters that, that won't die, they need the piercing, which is why I did an Overblast rather than Mega Bomb. Uh, but anyway, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed this video, and good luck with these battles if you, if you manage to do them. Um, but yeah, otherwise, that's it from me. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in a video soon.